Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoy this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I own Word Therapy Publishing and Alphabet Theater Workshop. But many of you know me as Wise Courtship because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to share God's word and to pray for one another. And of course, give you some encouragement as you go out of the door. And I want to thank everyone who's watching me via so many social media platforms such as Twitch and YouTube and Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, can I say Twitter? <laughs> so many ways that you guys are watching me. And of course, you can watch the replays right on my um, YouTube channel, which is uh, bit.ly forward slash YouTube, uh, Tony Tube. Uh, the, both T's are capitalized. Okay. So it's bit.ly forward slash uh, Tony Tube. That's T-O-N-I-T-U-B-E. Both T's are capitalized. And I want to thank everyone who are, li who are listening to me via various uh, podcast, and you can find me on iTunes and um, uh, is it Apple? All of those places that you can stream um, podcasts. Go ahead and listen to it. you'll find me. <laughs> you will find me. Okay, so let's go ahead and say hello to some of the people who are already in the house. Oh my goodness, Wendy Key is in the house. Blessings to you, darling. Blessings to you. She is a live stream queen, superstar in the live stream world. Good to see you, superstar in God's world, really, and a good friend of mine. Good to see you, darling, evangelist Wendy Key. And she's visiting us via Facebook. And Lakeisha Mosley from the Lakeisha Mosley Show visiting us. Good afternoon to you uh, from Facebook as well. Hello, Caroline. Good to see you. Good to see you, darling. Um, Tuning in from Facebook too as well. Facebook is in the house. Hey, Twitch, what's up? <laughs> and Judy, good to see you on today. Judy Arlene St. Pierre, part of the Wise Courtship family. All of you guys are actually. So good to see each and every one of you. So guess what, guys? We're going to be bouncing around in scripture a little bit um, for this uh, lesson on today. And today we're going to talk about, now why do I have that up there? Let's see. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about, and I actually should have changed this. Let me change it real quick. Um, yeah, let me change this right there. And here we go. It is 10 things God loves. 10 thing, 10 things God loves. And I want to thank everyone who's also watching me via my website. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. You're watching via www.wisecourtship.com. So let's talk about the 10 thing God loves. Last week, we talked about seven things God hates. And so we're going to go into 10 things God loves, and we're going to get right into it because we have a list ahead of us. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is God loves the world. 
God loves the world. And many of you are familiar with this scripture that comes from John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves the world. He loves this world. He designed this world. He created this world. He loves the world, the world and all the people in it, the animals, everybody. He loves the world. He does not hate us, but he does love the world. And he has given an invitation for us to come closer to him. And he talks about that in John 3, 16. All right. So we're going to move along in this list because we have 10 things that we're going to talk about that God absolutely loves. God also loves sinners. Okay. He loves sinners. So look at Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8, God loves sinners, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God was always thinking about, you know, somebody says you're a sinner. You know, we got saints and we got sinners. The way we say things is if God hates one more than the other or he loves one more than the other. That's not true. He does love sinners. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to believe in him. He wants you to have a relationship with him. And if you would confess your sins to him, in other words, you would tell him all about the things that you have done wrong. He is faithful to forgive us. OK, he's not like man where he's going to hold things against you. So God does love of sinners. Oh my goodness. I wonder if I'm going to get a comment off of that right there. So now this is the third thing that God loves. God loves those who believe in Jesus Christ. God loves those who believe in Jesus Christ. Let's look at John 16, 27. For the father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I come out from God. So God loves those who believe in Jesus Christ, because guess what? Jesus is God's son. And if you believe in him, he loves you. Just like if you treat my sons well, then I'm going to like you because you treat my sons well. OK, that is so good to know. Hey, Frazier, good to see you on today. Greetings from Germany. Good to see you. Good to see you. We have to talk. We haven't talked in a while. Um, amen. That's right, Lakeisha. He loves the sinner and he loves those that love God. And Frazier, you're absolutely right. God loves the sinner. It's the sin that he hates. Oh my gosh. It's the sin that he hates. In other words, sometimes you have a friend and they do something, you know, that you don't like. You don't like what they did, but you still love them. Oh my gosh. So we can understand it on a human level. God's that God definitely surpasses us in the area of love. And so he, you can understand it on God's level, at least a piece of it anyway, that God loves you. Even when you make mistakes, he loves you. And three, God loves those who believe in Jesus Christ because to believe in Jesus is to believe in him. Oh my goodness. All right. So now let's get to, I think it's four. So um, God loves those who love him. Proverbs 8, 17. We talk about um, God loves those who love Jesus, but God loves those who love him. Let's look at verse Proverbs 8, 17. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. I mean, it's so hard not to love somebody who loves you. I mean, think about it. <laughs> in your own life. It is so hard not to love someone who loves you, who shows love towards you and shows kindness towards you. And God is no different, only better. He loves you. When you love him, he loves you. you your love is not, you know, when you sometimes when you love a, a, a man or a woman, you love them and do so much for them and they don't show love back. But he is so willing to show love back towards you. So God loves those who love him. Let's go to the next one. God loves those who keep his commandments. And that D-E-U-T is, is abbreviated for Deuteronomy 7, 9. Deuteronomy 7, 9. God loves those who keep his commandments. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. One of the best ways to show that you love God is to keep his commandments. Am I getting any amens on here? <laughs> to keep 
his commandments. And he loves people who are trying so hard to do what he says and to listen to him. You know, you may have more than one child and you love all of your children. But when you have a child that just really sits beside your feet and tries to do what you tell them to do, it just puts a little extra layer of love there. And so he really loves those who love the who keep his commandments and you're trying to keep his command. You're trying to do what's right. That is so important. The next one is God loves those he corrects. He loves those he corrects. Proverbs 3, 12. Now, remember when our parents used to say, uh, this hurts me more than it hurts you. And I, I, the reason why I chastise you is because I love you. We don't want to hear that, but it's absolutely true with God. God loves those he corrects. In Proverbs 3, 12, it says, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father, the son in whom he delighted. So listen, when, when someone loves you, they're going to correct you. They're not going to let you just do anything you feel like doing, okay? And watch you go to hell in a handbasket, go to hell with gasoline pants on, okay? God loves you, so he's going to correct you. When you're wrong, he's going to tell you you're wrong in love. And you, we have got to snap out of this, dear ones. We got to snap out of this, dear ones, where we feel like people can't tell us anything. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> right, Judy? We got to, we got to snap out of that. Yes, indeed, Wendy. Thank you so much for that. She said, amen. That's some good word. We're coming straight. I mean, every time I teach, we come straight out of the Bible. But I wanted to give you guys a list of some things we talked about. And if you missed last week, wasn't that good about the seven things God hates? You can watch that on my YouTube channel. That will probably be released in another week. So make sure you subscribe. Um, but that was really, really good. So this week, we wanted to talk about the things that God loves. So let's go now back to the list and let's review a little bit. We said that God loves the world. We said that God loves sinners. We said that God loves those who believe in Jesus Christ. We said God loves those who love him. We said God loves those who keep his commandments. God loves those he corrects. Okay, so he still loves you even if he's correcting you. And when he love when when someone loves you, they're going to tell you the truth about yourself. So here's more of the list. God loves justice. Wow, that sounds real good right now. Because we're in a world where people seem like they don't like justice, but God loves it. In Psalms 37, 28, it says, For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. God loves um, justice. He does not like um, when people don't show mercy. He does not like when people don't tell the truth. We talked about that on last week. He does not like when people are wronged and they are not um, taken care of the way that they should be taken care of. When you do something wrong against a person and you feel like you're going to get away with that and, and all that, he doesn't like that. He doesn't like all that confusion. He likes for us to deal with each other honorably and to love one another. And, um, and, and a lot of the scriptures talks about, you know, having, um, holding other people, um, higher than ourselves, not that they're better than us, but we consider their needs and their wants. Um, you know, and not always think about ourselves and what we want for ourselves. So God loves justice. Another thing God loves is the righteous. You're not trying to be righteous um, all by yourself without any effect. It's not that you, uh, he would not love you anyway, because we learned that he does love sinners. He doesn't like the sin. He doesn't love the sin. He hates the sin, but he does love you. But God also loves the righteous. Psalms 11, 7 says, for the righteous Lord loveth righteous. For the righteous Lord loveth righteous. His countenance does behold the upright. So God loves when you are living right and trying to do right uh, in his sight. Now, many of y'all have heard this next one. If you've been in church any length of time and it's time to give up the money, you hear that God loves a cheerful giver. We use it in the area of money, but it can be any type of giving. Money is important now. Don't sit on the money, but also any type of giving, but just to be a cheerful giver all around. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7, it says, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly 
or out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You know, to be stingy, I mean, that you can almost see that's not of God right there. <laughs> but when you open up your heart and your hand, whether it be money, whether it be food, clothing, finances, a place to stay, hospitality, in everything that you do, you ought to be a cheerful giver. You should never give away things or give things to people, malice in your heart or uh, in, in a way that uh, you're being two-faced or could care less about the person. You always want to do things in love and you want to be open with your love and share your love and share the, the things that God has blessed you with. So God loves a cheerful giver. So let's go back over the list one more time before we get to, I believe, the last one. First of all, God loves the world. God loves sinners. God loves those who believe in Jesus Christ. God loves those who love him. God loves those who keep his commandments. God loves those who he corrects. God loves justice. God loves righteous. And God loves a cheerful giver. And for the last one for today, God loves those who trust him. Wow. In Psalm 17, 7, it says, show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that savest by the right hand, them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. You know, it's nothing like a person who has trust in someone else. You know, the Bible tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. We must trust him. We must obey him, knowing that he He knows what's best. You know, very often, um, you know, when I'm producing plays or something like that, you know, a lot of the people, you know, if you bring somebody on new for the first time, I got to the point where I would only bring somebody new, like maybe one person new uh, per production or every two or three productions. And that's because when someone is really newbie and they have not been trained, they tend to ask a whole lot of questions. They have a lot of doubt because they don't have trust. They don't have faith in how the system works. Everyone who's been a, a veteran in it, they don't have that many questions or whatever. They, they have faith in how things work, that things will come together. And so it's the same thing with God, but even more important, God is the maker and creator of all things. He's the creator of the universe. He has everything under control. And there are times that we're going to hit bumps, I mean, in life. And sometimes they're absolute craters in life. And we're going to be wondering whether God has it under control. It's okay to sometimes feel like, oh, I'm a little scared and I'm uncomfortable and I'm fearful, but we should never get to the point that we don't trust God. God has everything under control. He is the master. He is the maker. He knows the um, from the, the whole scenario from the beginning to the end. And no matter how bad it gets, even on this earth, God is still in control. So these are the 10 things that God hates and I, God loves. We talked about hates last week. These are the 10 things that God absolutely loves. And I pray that it will bless you. I mean, just to know that God loves sinners and God loves us and that he loves us even when he corrects us is so soothing and so comforting. And so I pray that if you were watching today and you were just wondering whether God loves you, if you made too many mistakes for him to forgive you, you can take that right out of your mind. First of all, you need to have a relationship with God. And in order to have a relationship with God, you've got to believe in Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is God's son. You've also got to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. We've all sinned. We've what sinning means is that we've all done something wrong. And so you can't get all froze and felt like feel like that you can't go before God and say, hey, I've messed up. I'm sorry, because he will forgive you. That's why Jesus died. OK, so that we can go straight to God and say, God, you know, forgive me for my sins. We can have a relationship with him. We can talk things over with him. We can know that he loves us and that we can have a right relationship with God. So if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, and you believe that he is the son of God, you are what we call a Christian.
yeah, you just got to believe that. That's it. So I wish that you would really message me or somehow get in contact with me and let me know that you did receive Jesus Christ as your savior. I would appreciate that. You can tweet me at, at Wise Courtship or Instagram me, or you can email me at info at wisecourtship.com. All right. With that being said, we are going to go before the Lord in prayer. And um, before I actually get started with the prayer, I'm just going to check and see if anybody left a um, prayer request. Let's see. Somebody's messaging me. And my phone is moving slow. All right. So why are they, why y'all messaging me? Y'all know I'm on at this time. <laughs> the, the, the reason why I'm saying it like that is the, is the people in the wise culture family. And they know better than that. They like my children. Y'all know better than that. So uh, let's see. I'm just trying to pull up the prayer request and see if anybody um, put in a prayer request ahead of time. That's what I'm looking for. Um, and if you didn't, that's OK, because I can pray for you. Um, I can pray for you live right here. OK, so when I put my glasses back on, then you can go ahead and put your prayer request up through the chat box. But at this moment, we're going to go ahead and pray. So let's go before the Lord. Come on, let's celebrate God. If you don't mind, let's celebrate God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up. We magnify you, oh God. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise. First, we ask that you forgive us for our sins, oh God, for all the things that we thought that were wrong and the things we said that were wrong, places we've gone, we know we shouldn't have gone, the things we should have done and we wouldn't do. God, please forgive us, especially if we did not realize how much you love us, how much of the things that you do love about us and the things that you appreciate that we do. God, forgive us if we have not come close to you when you've been trying to draw us close to you, oh God. God, we just love you and we thank you and we honor you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you for keeping us even during this pandemic. God, we thank you for healing in our bodies. We thank you for our family, our friends. God, we thank you for bringing us through even this time of bereavement for so many, oh God, who have lost so many loved ones during this time. God, we thank you for keeping us safe. God, we thank you for just being so good to us, oh God, protecting us in so many ways from danger seen and unseen. And now, God, we come before you with our various prayer requests. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up at this time. God, we pray for the Wise Courtship family, for all of those who listen to every broadcast, those who are brokenhearted, oh God, who are seeking uh, healing in their hearts, oh God, seeking healing in their relationships. God, we pray for each and every one of them, oh God. Those who stay up late at night, oh God, from being nervous and worried and scared and heartbroken. God, we pray for them right now that you will cloak them with your love. And God, that you will impress on our hearts in our minds to pick up the phone and to call or to text or tweet, oh God, to connect with them and let them know that they are loved. God, we pray for every um, mother and father on this broadcast, oh God, as they're being stretched uh, to train and teach their children all the more, uh, even some while um, carrying and holding jobs, oh God. God, we pray that you would ease their minds and ease their burdens, oh God. You said um, your yoke is easy. God, help them to put all of their burdens on you. God, we pray for every business owner, those who may be losing and constantly losing so much in their business. Oh God, help them, oh God. If it can be increased, increase their business. If it needs to be changed, dismantled, reorganized, oh God, we trust you that whatever you do, oh God, that it will be better than what we've expected. God, we just pray for those who tune into us each and every day. They're not able to uh, comment on the chat box, oh God, or possibly they watch us on the replay. God, we just pray for them in their various situations. God, you said this poor man cried and the Lord heard them, heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. We, they don't have to necessarily be connected here, God, but you will hear them wherever they are. God, we just love you so much. Those who are suffering now, even in their bodies through sickness, go ahead and put your prayer requests up before I end this broadcast. Even if they're hurting in their bodies, oh God, and need healing, God, I touch and agree right now 
in the name of Jesus, that you will heal them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, whatever it is that is not aligned the way they should be, oh God. Every cell, every ligament, every bone, every muscle, oh God, come into alignment, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Every tumor to be shrunk, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you do not deserve to be in our bodies. You must go, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give us a strategy on what to eat, what to do, oh God. Even in our finances, give us a strategy, oh God, so that you will help us to do whatever it is we need to do so that you will prosper us. You said in your word, you've given us the power uh, to the power to get wealth. And we pray, pray, oh God, that you will endow us now, oh God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, give us the mind to serve. Give us the mind and heart to do what it is that you have called us to do. Stir up the gifts that are within us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And now God, for anyone who was uh, too shy to share their uh, concerns, possibly was too private to share with anyone. God, we just pray for them and put them on the altar in the name of Jesus, because you know all about it. It doesn't have to be articulated to man. It only has to be uh, settled with you, oh God. So God, we just give it to you, knowing that you, whatever you answer, is going to be better than what we've ever expected. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, God. Amen, amen, and amen. Somebody say amen in the chat box. So we just praise God and we thank you so much for tuning in. I just want to encourage each and every one of you uh, to hold on a little while longer. You know, um, I don't know if it's just from being a person who likes to read. I love to read. I always did. I don't know if it's because I'm a writer. I don't know if it's because... I act or direct, but you know, very often in a story, it may start off one way and the story will have a lot of peaks and valleys in it, but it always ends up with a happy ending. It always resolves itself. Something comes to a resolution in the end. And the, the things that we are taught in the Bible is one of the best books ever it's one of the books that you can go ahead and flip to the end if you want to. <laughs> and if you flip to the end of the book, you're going to find out that after all of this, we win. After all of this. And I know that some are maybe going through some really tough times right now. Or maybe it's not even a tough time as much as it is. You're just really rattled. It's just this whole situation is just rattling you, you know, to be sheltered in place and not to have a job and not to. And, and a lot of the concerns, of course, are valid. But if you can just look to God, because even though we're going through a lot of things, things always work out for a reason. You know, they always work out and you just have to consult God on what to do next. I have found that if you rely on your own intelligence your own ability, you're going to be shook up. <laughs> if you look to man system, if you look to the president, the government, if you look to anybody else but Jesus, you're going to be shook up. But if you look to God and ask him what's the next step, if you look to him and say, Lord, I don't understand this, what's going on? You're going to find peace in him. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that some of us will not go without a job or be unemployed or, or have someone pass on. Doesn't mean that, but it does mean that he will be with us till the end. And it feels so much different, beloved. All of you are watching me. I see the numbers going up. Good to see you. It feels so good, guys, to have your hand in God's hand because I don't know how you do it without him. I don't know how you make it without him. I don't know how you suffer without him. I don't know how you celebrate without him. I don't know how you triumph without him. We need God in our lives, especially even today. We need him. With all this division, we, with all this confusion, we need God in our lives. And if you put your hands in God, beloved, you are going to make it. Well, I've got to go. But I can be visited on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. 
Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, we got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video.